let me see if I can make $1,000 a day on a regular basis. Did that. Then it was like, can I make six figures in a day? Did that. Wow. So this year I made a million dollars in a day and I've done it more than once. Wow. Trading stocks. Wow, wow, wow. I think that God has given me the money for a reason in order to help impact other people. Mm. So yeah. it's to me, it's not mine. Yeah. Like he's given me this skill set and I've been able to like manage this this money, but it's a to me it's a ministry. Mm. So now the thought is, okay, Lord, now that you've given this to me, how am I best gonna give it away? Ooh. And as I give it away, I know that he'll continue to pour into me because that's just what he does. Yes. Like as I'm obedient, he'll keep giving. Absolutely. So I think that's what keeps me humble. Mm -hmm. Like I have a big responsibility, but the responsibility is to steward God's money well mm -hmm. and wow. to be able to give and be a blessing. And you know what's crazy? As a trader, we know that the money can disappear at any time. Yeah. So like you can't operate in fear as a trader. Yeah. Like you've literally got to step into every time that you might have been afraid or uh -huh. every time that looks like something is wrong and be able to act in that moment. Yeah. If you operate in fear, you're going to miss every trade. Hey, what up y'all? It's Ash Cash checking in. And if you are a creative entrepreneur, deal maker, investor, etc., I got something major to tell you. I will be at the Black Equity Con coming up in Miami on June 9th and June 10th. When I tell you, the roster is absolutely crazy. This isn't just a hype or rah-rah event. This is a legitimate conference with over 40 plus sessions, over two full days covering all things entrepreneurship, monetization, how to build a team, investing, and even mental and emotional health. We all know how important it is to pour into our own cup and take care of yourself first before we can take care of others. Entrepreneurship is no doubt the path to breaking generational curses. So if you are a black creator or entrepreneur looking to network with thousands of other like minds in the beautiful city of Miami, I need you to go to blackequitycon.com right now to save your seats. All right, let's get to the episode. Pay attention and listen, we about to teach class. Inside the boat, my man Ash Cash. So get your man right. Thursday nights, 8 p.m. You see him, change your life. Millionaire mindset, the best on earth. Blueprints of wealth and not a network. So get it while you can and he's standing right here. He's coming at the boat and see black millionaires. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Come at the boat and see black millionaires. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Welcome to another awesome episode of Inside the Vault with Ash Cash, the greatest money mindset show on the planet. Listen, when I tell you this next guest is going to blow your mind. A lot of us have aspirations to make six figures in a year. Some have aspirations to make seven figures in a year. Some say, you know what, let me try to make six figures in a month. Some say, let me make seven figures in a month. But this next guest made seven figures in one day. That's not a mess up. I'm saying it right. Seven figures in one day. We have the legend, Terry Egioma is in the building. Hey, that's good. Oh How my God. Doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Um, I'm so excited for this interview because, um, you know, your, your story isn't a story where uh, you were a trust fund baby and somebody gave you a million dollars and you flipped it into <laughs> like you have like a real story of, um, you know, really just kind of using your talents uh, to, you know, to create a conglomerate where you travel and trade. Yes. Or tra I trade and travel. Okay. I trade and travel. Right. But both is good. OK. All right. Cool. 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 <laughs> and so before we get into that, because I, I want to know. Oh. Right. I definitely want to know how you make seven figures in, in, a, in a month. Or a day. day. Yeah. Excuse me. I want to know. But before we go there, uh, for those who don't know, who is Terry Egioma? Well, as you said, I'm Terry Egioma. I quit my job as assistant principal to start traveling all over the world. And I afforded it by trading stocks. Like, that's the big thing. Yeah. And while I was gone, people started asking me to teach them how to trade. Yeah. 
But when you go back a little bit more, people are like, wait, but how did you start training? And you were in education. Well, I learned about it in high school. And then I went to MIT and I went, I interned on Wall Street. So I had known about trading, but I did this whole 180 and started going into the education and the nonprofit world. But I would trade on the side to supplement my income. So then I said, you know what? I finally got to be assistant principal of elementary school, which is everybody's dream. But for me, it was a headache. I was stressed. I was overeating. I was crying in the bathroom. I needed an exit strategy. So I started saying, you know what? If I could just make $300 a day trading stocks. I can replace this income. I don't got to deal with her. I don't got to deal with him. I don't have to deal with these kids. I don't have to worry about the staplers that got thrown at the other kid. <laughs> so then I said, okay, let me start working myself up. And I had been trading for a while, like I said, but I finally started getting to a place. Okay, I'm consistently making $100 a day. People get too excited. They think they're going to be a millionaire right away. No, the first goal was, let me just be positive. Yeah. Then it was, okay, can I make $100 a day? Okay, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. At $300, I was able to tell my boss deuces and start traveling. Wow. But then started getting good at it. Okay, let me see if I can make $1,000 a day on a regular basis. Did that. Then it was like, can I make six figures in a day? Did that. Wow. And now you're right. So this year I made a million dollars in a day and I've done it more than once. Wow. Trading stocks. Wow, yeah. wow, wow. But wait, before, before we live, wait, wait, wait. That's too much. Wait, hold on. So you're telling me, first and foremost, you start, you learn how to trade in high school. You go to MIT, right? Like that, like MIT is on my vision board for my son, right? You go to MIT, but you become a, a, an assistant principal. Like, like, ha, like how? How, Sway? Like how do you go from MIT to, and, and, and no disrespect to principals, but like, you know, for, you know, my wife and I, you know, we, we always look at my son and he's six. You know, his brain is sharp. We're like, oh, he's going to be an engineer. He, he has to, he's going to do something. And so that's why, like, all right, MIT is, is it. Mm -hmm. um, how do you go from MIT to principal? Well, and nonprofit. Yeah. So what happened was I interned on Wall Street, but I actually didn't like it. Yeah. Like, we're in the cubicle all day. I was data analyst. I was doing spreadsheets. It just wasn't fun. Mm -hmm. So I ended up getting a job in consulting. Mm -hmm. I was a business, con business consultant. And I thought, see, I still love travel then because I was like, oh, I'm going to get to travel all over the world and I go from here to there. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't like that. I was still in a cubicle, <laughs> still doing PowerPoints and spreadsheets. But the thought was I had one client who was Teach for America. Mm -hmm. And my, I had told my, my, like my bosses, my higher ups, like, you know what? I really want to do something where I can do implementation. I want to be hands on. I want to actually like do something and see it come to life. And they said, well, why don't you check out Teach for America? The, like we have some other people from the company that have gone to work for there. So I went to Teach for America and that's how my love for education mm -hmm. came in. We, I was in administration, but I trained the teachers. I worked on the Houston Institute and we like, we would get, 800 teachers a summer and train them to be teachers, but it was so that we could have educational equality. So for three and a half years, like that was my whole passion. I just want to have educational equality. I want every child to have the same education. And then from there, I ended up going to seminary. My, my story is crazy, mm -hmm. but I wanted to learn more about my faith. And then I went to work for a ministry and helped like their volunteer organization come together. So still education and nonprofits, but just different ways. And then decided to be the founding sense and principal of a school in Dallas. Wow, wow, wow. And then, and then and your, your journey takes you to Thailand. Yeah. Your journey takes you to Vietnam. Talk about that a little bit for us. So travel has always been a passion. In college, my last semester, I studied abroad in Madrid. Mm. And every single weekend, we'd be somewhere else. Mm. So I did like my first solo trip to Venice when I was, what, 20-something, 21? And then, like, went to Paris and London and all these places when I studied abroad in school. So I always knew I wanted to travel. And so after I quit my job, I was ready to travel a grid again. So I did this program called, it's called We Roam. It's not around anymore. Have you ever heard of something called Remote Year? It's like a company where you can go, um, like, you live in a different country one month at a time. 
So they might like they all work remote, but they'll like go to Canada for a year and then Thailand. So I did something like that. Mm -hmm. So I was in Thailand for a month, then Vietnam for a month. I went to um, after that, I went to Australia. Then I went home home for a little bit, went to um, Israel and Greece. So I was just I was just all over the place. I was living my best life. Wow, 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 (laughs) wow. And then, you know, you. Uh, what was that, you know, that that sort of like that breaking point for you? Because I know you you did say, um, you know, you were working as an assistant principal. Um, you know, you're getting stressed out. You're getting frustrated. You're doing your trading stock on the side. Um, and then, you know, you said, all right, when I reach this certain number, then, I, then, then, then I'm out. Um, did you lose the passion for, you know, for working in the school system or was it just not worth the time? You know what? Having a bad boss Mm -hmm. will literally take away really good talent. I would have stayed in the school if the environment was better, but it was just a toxic work environment. I had gone in thinking like, oh, we're going to build the culture together. This is going to be a family. We're going to like take care of the kids. But every single day I got to work, I had four different bosses. None of them got along. So it was always, okay, you do what one says, and then the other one says you did it wrong. Mm. And then you do what this one says, and then the other one says, why did you do that? Like, like for example, we had to go recruit kids. I had two, two guy principals and then, like, the boss of the principals. She wanted us to go out to houses. Now, COVID, we can't do this no more, yeah, yeah. so I don't even know how they recruiting kids. But she wanted us to go knock on doors to get kids. Mm. And then the principal told me on the side, I ain't going to no door to knock on nobody's door, tell all the parents to come to me. Wow. So I try to do the thing that the principal says. I organize this big fair. All the parents come. They're having a great time. They they sit down. They meet with him. Like, beautiful. She comes, like, and, and actually, like, people remember this. She pulled me to the side into the office and told me how stupid I was wow. because I didn't do what she told us to do because I didn't go to door to door. And I'm like... How do you, how do you answer to both? Right. You can't. Right. So every day I'm sitting here thinking like, dang, like I'm not good enough. I'm crying. Like that's the crying in the bathroom after somebody's yelling at you in front of everybody and making you look like you did something wrong when you know clearly you did what this other person said. And, you know, he's not going to he's not going to stand up for me. He's right. like, oh, yeah, Terry should have done. Mm, right, right, you right, told right, me right, what, what, right, what was that right, conversation right. we just had? So that kind of stuff. And it happened all the time. Like there was another time we did these banners. And I know this sounds crazy, but people in education will get it. Like yeah. we we go through so much. We're always working. Like the thing is, oh, you get to get off at three o'clock. You never get off right. at three That's o'clock. Right. Yeah. After it's over, then you go home and you're still working. Yeah. So like there was this one time we had all these banners. And like I remember us like. I like brought my family in like we worked really hard. It was thousands of dollars for the banners, tons of hours to get them up. Do you know that same principal the well, the manager of the principals, she told me that I didn't do a good job because one thumbtack Mm. was a different color than all the other thumbtacks. And can you imagine like and the thing is, I I really think she saw something in me and just wanted to keep making me feel smaller. Mm. Like every time there would have been a time to celebrate me, she found the one thing to to make me feel like I didn't do it right. Mm. And maybe it's because I did go to MIT, but I'm still here at the school. Or or maybe it's because I'm happy and she right, not, you right, know? Right, right. Her people, so, her people, you know? Right. And so sometimes it's 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 what's within them, you know, they can't give love if, if they don't have love to give, you know? Thank you. Um, and, but, but it became a blessing, right? Mm-hmm. Because um, those mean bosses... Um, you know, now, you know, I mean, you, you make, you, you've made in a day, you make in a day what they'll probably make in their lifetime. Right. If that, if that, as an educator, we made like 60,000 a year, like she may never make or see a million dollars. Wow. 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 And that's okay. I don't want to put anybody down that won't see that, but it's just the thought that like, had I stayed in that school, yeah. stayed in that building, trying to impress her or try to prove that, like, I should be there, I would never have accomplished the things that I've accomplished now. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. And then, so talk, talk to us about, you know, trading, right? Like, um, you know, and, and, and that's why I love your story. And that's why I was like, we have to have you on because um, you went from assistant principal, right, um, to, you know, making a million dollars in a day multiple times. And I'm stressing that 
Um, but it didn't start there, like you said, right? Uh, you went from 600 a day. You know what I'm saying? You 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 made six figures in a day. So even if if, if for the for the for the you know person out there that's listening, six hundred dollars a day will change someone's whole entire life. Yeah. And so, how do you make money trading? Yeah. So like it's it's pretty simple. I do stocks and options only. Mm. So for all those that are like, oh, do all these penny stocks and everything else, I'm a stocks and options girl. Yeah. And I'm a technical analysis trader. So I look at charts. So I'm looking at charts to see when is the best time to get in and the best time to get out. Mm. And I and I do cover this in trade and travel. Yeah. But like, and a lot of this too, I've been trading 11 years now. Mm -hmm. So this is just experience. But we start off with, okay, how do we pick the right companies? Then we go into risk management. Like in Thailand, I lost the most money I had ever lost ever. Wow. And so like that story alone was like, okay, you got to fix this. You got to have some kind of risk management to protect yourself from losing. Mm -hmm. Then I'll buy it. So simple, making it simple for those. Your people are, they're geniuses. So they know all this. Yeah. But just for those who don't, yeah. like for the, the state, the trade that was a million dollar trade. It's options, so it's a little more advanced, but let's just say keep it simple. So, like, say I bought it when Amazon was $3,000, and then when it went up to $3,500, that's a $500 difference, I sold it. I get to keep the difference. So, literally, it's the same as when I had candy stores when I was growing up. You buy it, low blow pops, 10 cents, sell them higher, and you get to keep the difference. Cool thing, though, and this is where my advanced students are and where, where like what I'm good at, I can make money on the way down. Mm. So I do something called short selling. Mm -hmm. I look at gaps in Globex trading. So that's like, how do you take advantage of moves overnight? And then we bring in options and that's a hundred shares at a time. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what I do. Hey, does managing and multiplying your money cause you stress, overwhelm, or does it even keep you up at night? You all heard the saying, right? It's not how much money you make, it's how much money you keep. Well, I wanna show you secrets of the 1% to show you how to leverage life insurance to become your own bank. It's the same system I use to buy apartment buildings, to buy real estate, to buy vehicles, etc. All while my money continues to grow tax-free as if I never touched it. Some of you saw me on Inside the Vault episode number 64, but that wasn't enough, you all. I gotta take it to another level. I gotta show you how I built trust that's gonna prevent taxation, that I was able to build generational wealth and pass that money on to the next generation that's gonna be completely tax-free. If you're ready to learn these things, I need you to visit the site InsideProsperity.com for the five-day challenge that we're going to show you how to change your financial life forever. That's InsideProsperity.com. Do it now. No opportunity wasted, right? InsideProsperity.com. No, I love that. And, and, I, and I think that, uh, you know, it's one of those things that uh, is important to know uh, that as long as you could, you, you could get educated on how to do it, anybody could do it. Am I right in saying that? I agree, yeah. yeah. And this is the thing, it's about more business savvy, mm. I think. Yeah. So anybody who can go into a Dillard's, that's my favorite store, so go into a store and you can find something on a sales rack and say, hey, this is on clearance right now, let me get it now because I know that it's a good deal. Yeah. That's the kind of business acumen that you bring into trading. Yeah. I'm not gonna buy it when everybody says it. I'm not gonna buy it when it's up at these high prices. We were just talking about that with Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna wait until it's on sale. Yeah. And when you can do that kind of that kind of thinking, then yeah. you can be a good trader. Yeah, and, and you, you know, I, I wanna talk about that in a little bit uh, as it relates to the mindset of, that you have to have as a trader. Because, um, you, know, you know, people revere Warren Buffett, right? And Warren Buffett is like, when everybody's buying, that's don't buy, mm -mm. right? When everybody's selling, that's when you buy, right? Like you buy low, sell high, right? And a lot of us do the opposite, right? Especially in our community, honestly, where we wait to the hype. Like if, yeah. if, if something is low, we won't get in at the low, but when it goes up and, it, and it's hype, it's hype, it's hype, then we'll get it. But then the only place it could go is down. Right. And then if we got it and then it starts going down, 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 we, you know, we sell it and realize the loss. Like talk about that a little bit, the mindset that you have to have in order to be a successful trader. Yeah. Let me tell you. So let me tell you what people do. And then I'll tell you what's supposed to be done. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So like you said, it's low, it's low, but this is when all the bad news is coming out. 
So this is when somebody's saying, oh, the car is not going to, I'm thinking about like Tesla right mm -hmm. now. Um, there was a time where everybody said, well, they're not selling cars. There's, um, it's, it's in debt. Uh, Elon Musk is, is not a good leader. Like all the news is going to be bad. At that time, a lot of people are thinking, well, it's a bad stock. All the news is bad. I'm not going to touch it because they're scared. Yes. Right. And then all of a sudden it starts going up. Now they, they are having this is what I call FOMO. They're having fear of missing out. Everybody's talking about it. They making money. Somebody over here, your cousin then said, oh, well, I made a thousand dollars. And then somebody at the barbershop say, oh, go get into this. So now all of the hype is up. So now everybody's thinking that they're they're going to miss out. Mm. So now they're wanting to get in like that's the emotional things going in our head in their head. As a trader, what's really going through my head is. Everything like this is still a healthy company, but for whatever reason, the stock price is low mm -hmm. when it's low. And I'm thinking it's on sale. This is the time for me to get it. This is the time to buy. Yes, it's scary. Yes, I'm afraid, but I'm a Christian girl. So I'm like, but God didn't give me a spirit of fear. I'm getting this right now. And it goes it, it goes with my trading plan. That's key, too. You have to have some kind of plan before you're getting into this. Yeah. So it fits everything in my trading plan. The charts line up. Let's go. Then when it gets up, everybody else is having this fear of missing out. I'm thinking it's time to sell. This mm. thing is too expensive. Yeah. It's gone up too high. Like that's the real mental thing you're supposed to be thinking as a trader. But I think the problem is we as people are not disciplined. Mm. And like, like when we think about trading at a downside, oftentimes when we're losing we don't want to give up on something that we're losing on. Mm. And we feel like we can make it work. Mm. And that's something that happens all in all parts of our life. It could be a relationship you don't want to give up on, the relationship not going well, but you still holding on because yeah. you have a hope that it might turn around. Yeah. Like those same things from just life end up showing up in trading. But we've got to turn those around because in order to be a good trader, you got to let go of all that. And then be able to get in when things are low and sell when things are high. Yeah, yeah, no, I love that. And then so um, what type of, like, what was that feeling like, right? Two feelings I, I want to know. What was that first feeling uh, when you made your first seven figures in a year? And then what was that feeling like when you did it in a day? Mm. So I made my first seven figures in 2019. Mm -hmm. And then I made my million dollars a month in 2020 mm. and then a million dollars a day in 2021. Mm. In 2019, honestly, it was a little lackluster because I had worked so hard to get to be a millionaire yeah. and then it happens and it's just like, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> right. Is this what it's supposed to be? Right. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, on to the next thing, okay. <laughs> Actually, I remember that day, like I was looking at my cell phone because it was about to tick over to a million and my, my mom had come to visit me and it was summertime, so there was a movie outside playing in the park and I was like waiting for it to happen so I could tell her, but it, it didn't happen. So I'm like, I, then I get sad, like, oh man, like I was, she gotta go home tomorrow. I can't even tell her. So I'm like, let's go watch this movie. We go watch the movie. By the end, it had just ticked over and I was like, <laughs> oh my God! Um, and then we don't drink, but we we figured we needed something to celebrate. So like we went to a restaurant. We we're like, give us a drink. We we have something big to celebrate. Big news. Yeah. That drink was so nasty. It was. We were like, oh, okay, now. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> So honestly, it was a little lackluster, yeah. and I I wish that I had. I wish it had felt different. Yeah. Um, but then when I made the million dollar in a day, that felt significant. Mm. That felt like, wow, like you've been working 11 years for this yeah. and you just hit a million dollars in a day. Mm. And I, and I actually had made a million dollars at a million and 87,000. Mm. So when I did the calculations, that's like making a thousand dollars a day, every day of the week for four and a half years. Mm. Mm -hmm. I had just done that in a day. Right. Like that, that's monumental. Absolutely, that's, yeah. that's generational shifting money. Yeah. That's like neighborhood changing money. Absolutely, like yeah. that's, I can help somebody like be able to get water in their neighborhood in Nigeria money. Right, like, you right, know, like, right, yeah. wow. Yeah. Um, but I will tell you the truth that day I actually had, I was preparing a documentary tour mm -hmm. and I had meetings all day with my team. So I didn't get to actually celebrate the way that I wanted to mm -hmm. or should have. And so for a while, 
Like it didn't really click into like how significant it was wow. until I did the numbers later. Wow. So that's actually, I, I don't know if you do this, but that's one thing I would tell people to do. Like we've got to start celebrating wow. our wins yeah, more. Sure. Because otherwise, we just keep going and we get on this hamster wheel and it leads us to, like, not being able to enjoy anything. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And and, and I'm glad you said that because I think, you know, um, that's, you know, the biggest thing for us um, that keeps us anxious, that keeps us depressed, right? Because we're not being here. We're not being here and now. Uh, You know, we're, you know, I I mean, I'm guilty of it. Uh, I'll set like a milestone for myself. I'll reach that milestone. And even before I could even celebrate that milestone, my mind is not even at that milestone. I'm now thinking of what's next. Yeah. Right. Instead of just sort of like being in a, at that space, that's like, you know, um, you know, where, where, where I'm like here and I'm enjoying it. And I'm, you know, it's like you yeah. said, celebrating those wins. Yeah. You know, um, I know Tanya Rapley has been on the show, yes. but she reached out to me because she was hitting a big milestone. and She's planning a party for herself. Yes. And you know what? I was so proud of her yeah. because we don't celebrate enough. Yeah. And too many times we just run by all these big things that happen in our life. And, and it's like, for what? What was this all for? Why did I make the money? Why Why did I even try this if I'm not going to enjoy it once I get here? Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, 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 you know, fast out the Tanya because, um, you know, it, it, it's true. And I think that also one of the, the, the things is that um, we're also sometimes afraid of what other people are going to say. That part. You know, and the people who are around us who may not necessarily celebrate us, you know, because I know, you know, I've had situations in my life where, you know, I've wanted to celebrate, um, but because, you know, the people around me may not see it as a success or they might, you know, not um, be as happy as I am, you know, now stop sharing. Now stop, you know, now I'm celebrating inside. Now I'm trying to downplay my success because of the other people around. So, so how, how did you, deal with that right because um you know like you know you know you don't come from a rich family mm-hmm. um now you know you you multi-millionaire like how do you how do you how, do you, how did you how do you and how did you you know deal with others that are close to you that may not be you know as you know wealthy as, as you are yeah there's a couple facets to that there's the how do you invo- involve your family? Yeah. Because that was one fear. Like one, okay, once they know, are they gonna start asking me yeah. for stuff? Like I'm, I'm half, half black, regular black, and half Nigerian. Yeah. And in Nigeria, like I'm like, dang, once they find out, <laughs> everybody gonna call me. Right. Oh, my sister, my auntie, <laughs> my friend. No, I don't know you. Right. Right. But you know what? The cool thing, it hasn't happened. Mm-hmm. I think that was a fear that was that it did not actually happen. Yeah. My family has been so supportive and I've actually hired a lot of them. Mm. So now when I win, we all win as a family. Yeah. Like my cousins are my customer service. Mm. One of them is my chief of staff. Yeah. Like this is a family business. Yes, yes. And so I think that helps. And then even my dad, like I hired my dad's team to do all my YouTube comments. Wow, so wow. sorry y'all, if y'all get some and you're like, I didn't know that wasn't you, my bad. It's probably my dad. <laughs> right. Can you believe this? That's this is cool. random, but. So somebody in my YouTube comments was like, oh, I want to ask you out on a date. Why did my dad say, okay? (laughs) I was like, daddy, what you trying to do? (laughs) He's like, you need to go on a date. (laughs) Anyway, but yeah, I think one thing that's helped is hiring a family. And then on the other side, like, I've really had to watch who's in my circle. Yeah. Like. I, I can't share with everybody that I made a million dollars in a day. Yeah. And like, that's, that's tough. And even like now I'm like, dang, once they find out what they're going to say, right, right. but the people in my circle now, they can celebrate with me. Absolutely. They're, they're not jealous. They're happy. They yeah. want to see me win. They're like, okay, let's go. When you going to get the five million in right, a day? Right. That was cute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, right. and we all go hard. Like we push each other. Yeah. So I think that too has been important. Yeah. And then just praying for discernment and wisdom. Yeah. Like yeah. there's a way to say something and a way not. Mm. Like I don't have to go and boast and flaunt and tell nobody. Usually when I'm in a room, nobody knows yeah. that I that I do well. And I'm not the flashy one. Yeah. I don't. I mean, today I, I look kind of cute, but that's my team, not me. Not the boy. <laughs> um, Flash out to the team. Right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But 
yeah, usually like I'm the one in the back, no name brand. Yeah. I have like a Kia Sportage from 2011. Yeah. Like, yeah. but that's, that's who I really am. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, hey, wait, 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 wait. I know you want to watch this next video, but listen, if you are an entrepreneur, business coach, business consultant, or a small business owner who has a story and wants to learn how to create multiple streams of income from your story, I need you to text me right now. My book to 646-687-4152. That is my personal number. I have been an author for over 12 years. I've written 10 books. Four of them have been bestsellers, and I've sold over 100,000 books. But I've also helped a lot of my clients take their expertise and put it into a story, then create multiple streams of income from that. So I wanna help you do the same thing. So text my book to 646-687-4152. All right, all right, let's go back to the video. And, and I love that because that's the beauty of it. Like I, um, um, you know, I, I haven't made a million in a day, but, um, but, 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 I, but I, I too love um, being regular. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like I don't, allow um success to define me i still want to you know you know go to walmart myself and you know and do do the, the regular thing and it's funny uh because uh you know i uh the other day i was I, I was pumping gas um and it was just like i guess energetic alignment i walked past uh, you know the this this you know young girl uh you know little girl and her mom and the little girl was asking her mom she's like mom what's a celebrity um, and you know, the mom was like breaking it down and saying, you know, what a celebrity was or whatever the case may be. And I don't know, something in me was like, oh, you should give him a book. But I, but I, but I didn't, you know, I, I, it was just, I had a book in my, in my, in my car. Uh, as so I went in there and I went to the young lady and I said, um, I'm not a celebrity, but I want to give you a book. And a mom looked up to me and she said, ask cash. And then, and I, and I was shocked because, you know, I didn't have no, I had nothing on. I was just kind of like, you know, just yeah. kind of randomly doing it. Um, and, and she was just like, oh my God, thank you so much. And then I got in my car and then she DM'd me afterwards and she said like, yo, you just made my daughter's day. Like it was manifestation in real time. And she's like, yes, you are a celebrity. And, you know, I, I bring that up because, you know, you know what you said about, you know, not allowing your money to make you somebody else. Right. Just be who you are um, and you can still have impact without, you know, without having to, you know, have the, you know, the, the, the glamorous thing. And there's nothing yeah. wrong with it. That's what you want. And right. That's what that's you want. Like. Yeah. 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 And so and so how do you, um, you know, maintain that normalcy? Right. So like, mm -hmm. you know, you know, you know what? You know, what type of mindset, like, 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 why didn't you, you know, get the, you know, 17,000 square foot home and right. the Bugatti and the entourage and all that stuff when you could, you know, obviously afford yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Well, tell you the truth. I like houses. Yes. So I do have like a pretty big house in Puerto Rico, okay. um, but I'm scaling that back actually. So now I'm getting like a new condo. But anyway, so houses, I like houses. Yes. <laughs> um, but I think the bigger thing for me is... I truly think that I'm just a steward of this money. Mm. Like, I think that God has given me the money for a reason in order to help impact other people. Mm. So yeah. it's to me, it's not mine. Yeah. Like he's given me this skill set and I've been able to like manage this this money. But it's a to me, it's a ministry. Mm. So now the thought is, OK, Lord, now that you've given this to me, how am I best going to give it away? Ooh. And as I give it away, I know that he'll continue to pour into me because that's just what he does. Yes. Like as I'm obedient, he'll keep giving. Absolutely. So I think that's what keeps me humble. Mm -hmm. Like I have a big responsibility, but the responsibility is to steward God's money well mm -hmm. and wow. to be able to give and be a blessing. And actually, I love what you said earlier about impact. I think a celebrity is someone who is able to actually have impact on your life. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. There's a lot of famous people, yeah. but a celebrity in my world and in maybe that girl's world is going to be somebody who actually can change her life. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be like monetary. It could be mine. Like her mind has changed now that there was somebody who was willing to give her a book. And her mom was so excited by an author. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. now her mindset says an author mm -hmm. is a celebrity. Absolutely. Yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah. I love that. And I, I mean, I love what you what you're saying about steward, being a steward of money. Um, because, you know, this is the greatest money mindset show on the planet. And a lot of times when we talk about money mindset, um, and, and, and fast out to my brother, Julian Gordon, he always says like, uh, the reason why you haven't made a million dollars in a day 
because you don't need a million dollars, right? Meaning that God knows that are you going to be a, a steward, yeah. you, know, uh, you know, of this money? And if you don't need it, like a lot of people don't even have a plan. They don't even know what they're going to do, yeah. you know, if they if they made that money. Um, and, and, and so are you going to be what? Fruitful and do what? Multiply, Multiply. right? Yeah. And, and so being able to, you know, have uh, access to this money, like you said, it's not yours, right? You're, you're just, um, you know, a vessel to be able to help bless others. I love that perspective because... Um, you know, I want, I want somebody right now that's listening to this, understand that, you know, there's two emotions in the, in the world, right? You have love or fear. Mm -hmm. And if you are operating in fear, then you're not going to get the things that you love, right? A lot of times people just want a lot of money just because they are afraid. They want that sense of security mm -hmm. and they're leaning on the money to give them security instead of leaning on what? Leaning on God. God. And you know what's crazy? As a trader, we know that the money can disappear at any time. Yeah. So, like, you can't operate in fear as a trader. Yeah. Like, you've literally got to step into every time that you might have been afraid or uh -huh. every time that looks like something is wrong and be able to act in that moment. Yeah. If you operate in fear, you're going to miss every trade. Mm, mm. So, like, as a trader, I have to operate in a spirit of power and a yeah. sound mind, right? Yeah. Like, that's the authority God's given me. Yeah. And I've got to just operate in that yeah. to do any of this well. Yeah, and no, I love it. And then what, 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 what's the most money you, you've lost trading? Yeah. You know? Um, hmm, the most in a day was, was still six figures. Mm -hmm. Um, like anytime. So I, I have this like three to one reward to risk ratio. Yeah. So if I'm trying to make a million, I have to be willing to risk like 300,000 mm. on a trade. Yeah. And there's times where it didn't go right. So yeah. I lost it. Mm. So that's about the range. Yeah. But even like if, so this is like a reward to risk. This is risk management 101 for anybody out there listening. Yeah. So if you're a trader and you're trying to do three to one reward to risk ratio, mm -hmm. that means that you could take four trades and lose three of them and make one to break even. Mm -hmm. But that means that most of the time you actually might lose more than you win mm -hmm. as a trader. Mm -hmm. But what that means for me is I, if I lose three times in a row, that could have been almost a million dollars that I lost trading just to make a million dollars. Mm -hmm. So I have to be willing to to risk that. Mm -hmm. Like, have I got there? Usually I'm a little more better. I'm yeah, better yeah, than yeah, that. Yeah, like, yeah, and yeah. now my, my win streak is much better than that. Absolutely. But like, that's where I've got to be willing to risk yeah. in order to really see the reward. Yeah. Yeah. And no, I love that. And then so right now somebody's watching, uh, you know, whether they, they, you know, work in a school system, post office, UPS, whatever. They have a yeah. job right now. Uh, they want to, well, they want to start trading. They want to start, um, you know, building wealth for themselves. Where, where would they start? Trade and travel, of course. Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> but a couple of just easy things they can do. Start watching CNBC. Uh -huh. Like you need to start learning the language, start listening to the companies, the businesses. And CNBC actually has a cell phone app. So you can download that and, and then actually put a watch list, excuse me, a watch list in so that whenever something happens with your favorite company, you get notified. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good place to start. Yeah. Next thing, you got to open a brokerage account. Mm -hmm. But I want you to open one that's more robust. Mm -hmm. Don't do just like the Robin Hood or the, the easy, you know, oh, this came up on my cell phone. I'm about to. No, you need one that actually has fast order times. Mm -hmm. So whenever you get into a trade, it needs to be able to execute immediately. Mm -hmm. You need one that has like more robust order types. I do something called stop losses to protect myself from losing. Does your broker have a stop loss? Mm. And you know all this, but I'm, you sure, know, no, um, does your broker also let you do two exits at a time? Mm. So I can put a stop in to protect myself and also a target so that if I'm, you know, at work or doing something different and the stock hits my target, it'll take me out of the trade with a profit. Mm. Only certain brokers will let you have two exits at, exits at a time. Mm. So some like TradeStation, TD Ameritrade, uh, Interactive Brokers, think more like those type of companies mm. have good order types. Mm. Um, so first two steps, put CNBC app on your cell phone, open a brokerage account. And then third, of course, I would say get educated. Yeah. And I, our, our course literally is number one on Teachable. So mm. we have a good course. Nice, nice, nice. And so funny that you say that because, you know, you know I'm, I'm part of Teachable and, you know, I get the emails. And so I got an email from, exact, from Teachable 
Terry, look at how old it is, right? So number one, of yeah. course, on Teachable. Uh, and so we're going we gonna, we gonna to tell you where to go uh, to get that trade and travel course. Uh, and, and that's the one thing I like because, you know, again, that education, right, is going to save people time and money. Yes. Right? It's going to take, save them time and money. It's going to allow them uh, to be able to, you know, you know, learn from the mistakes and the wins and be able to implement it, you know, very, very quickly. And you can do it at any age. Like mm. right before we came on the show, a friend texts me that she has like some mentors that are professors at Howard mm. and they're like senior citizens, but they're learning how to train. She was nice. she was like, I was going to tell them to do your course, yeah. but I asked them like what course they take it. And they were like, this girl, Terry, E.G., E.G. <laughs> <laughs> so they were already in nice, it, but nice. they're learning so much. So like, you're never too late. Yeah. Like you can do it at any age. Yeah. I think that's important for people to know. Cause a lot of people think, especially African-Americans, oh, we missed it. Yeah. Oh, somebody else got into it. So we can't do it. Yeah. And then as women, sometimes we get fearful. Well, I don't know who the right person is to teach me. I went to my boyfriend and he, he doing it, but he don't want to tell me. Yeah. But no, this is a way to level the playing field. Yeah. I was in education. I can try to make it as simple as possible. Anybody, any age, you don't have to have a lot of money. Mm. So that's yeah. what we And how about. has that been like being a woman trader, right? Like in a in a game that frankly was built for white men. It was. <laughs> right? So in a game that was built for white men, you are a black woman trader. Like, 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 like what like how is that? You know? You know what? I think I have an advantage because nobody ever thinks that I'm going to be a force to reckon with. Mm. So I can be in a room of all white men mm-hmm. and they they don't care. Yeah. Because they think, oh, she's not a big deal. Yeah. But little do they know I'm a very Absolutely. big deal. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and I think in general, like I'm I'm surrounded by men, but all the men that I've come into into contact with that like do this finance and then talk about it and like yourself, like y'all are so loving and kind and just it's it's actually been a really fun fun experience. Yeah, yeah, and and I think I think I think it's important because um, you know wealth and especially to uh, create other wealthy people, you have to be in that space of being you know, willing to learn, uh, being willing to share, uh, be, being willing to um, you know, you know, you know, uh, accept what you don't know and get the help that, that's necessary. And so, you know, you know, yes, you've been very successful with trading, right? But you also run a business. Mm-hmm. Um, and you, know, you made your first million dollars uh, you know, during 2000, you know, 19, yeah. uh, then you had your, your first million dollar month, 2020 during a pandemic. And then now a million dollars in a day. Um, what, you know, so somebody who's running a business, um, you know, uh, because for me, you know, I know when you go from, you know, one, uh, uh, you know, income level to the next, it's not the same skills necessary to maintain that. Um, And so talk a little bit to that entrepreneur who is in that transition, that entrepreneur who's making five figures um, and then now they made their first six figures in a year. Then the transition where, you know, now they're going to transition to the seven, like, like, like what, like what's necessary um, as a business owner, every step of the way to maintain sort of like that six and seven figure, uh, you know, status. Yeah. And you know what? I talk about this a lot because I think as creators, as content creators, we feel like, OK, once we put this together, this is going to be out there and we ain't got to do nothing else. Yeah. That is so wrong. Mm-hmm. Like that is the, the biggest myth I ever told myself yeah. was that I would be able to like put it out there and leave. Yeah. Because the next step is, okay, now you got customer service because you got customers. So now you got to make sure you're taking care of them. You're on these coaching calls. You got to make sure that like they have their passwords. Then you're hiring people. So now you're in HR. Now it's a company like my my company now has made over 30 million in revenue, the the, the course side. So valuation, sometimes they say your valuation is like 10 times that. That's like $300 million startup. At a $300 million startup range, that's a corporation. We need to have departments. We have to have accounting, lawyers. We need to have all of the people in place. So now I'm more CEO. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the thing people have to realize. If your company is going to be successful, which 
let's just say now it will be successful. Yeah. You need to know that there are stages. First, your creator, mm. then your coach, because you got your students better do good. That's yeah. how you're going to be. <laughs> right. That's how it's going to continue. Right. And then your CEO. Mm. And and it, and it, and in CEO, there's a time when you're every other hat too. You're chief of marketing, chief of operations, chief of sales, chief of everything. Yeah. But then you start hiring some people, and you got to learn how to manage those folks. Like yeah. that's the transition yeah. that that people should expect. Yeah, I love that because <laughs> um, you know, like you said, you you start off as the creator. You know, then you're the coach, so you can get the results. Now you're the CEO, and you kind of run run those processes. So that's that's awesome. And so, um, you know, somebody right now is struggling. Um, they're trying to figure figure out um, how they could, you know, you know, build their business up and be successful. What advice would you have for them? One, I think you always have to have a higher, like a higher purpose and mm. a higher why mm. to keep you motivated. Because yeah. there's going to be so many times as an entrepreneur that you're going to want to quit. Yeah. And so there's got to be some other reason. For me, it's I want to be able to help change systematic problems in the world. Mm. So education, many times our education is bad because the schools with uh, lower income neighborhoods have low funding. Mm. We can change that if we get more money in their pockets. Mm. I want to change the problem of water and bad water. If we had more money, we can actually get clean water. So like systematic problems that are that are bad because of no money. That's where I want our students to be able to like make enough money every day that, that we could change the world. Yeah. So like that's my bigger why. Yeah. Yeah. And because God told me to. Absolutely. That part too. Yeah. Yeah. That part. <laughs> If you are an entrepreneur, business coach, or small business owner who wants to get more visibility for your product or service, then consider advertising on Inside the Vault. We have been seen and heard over 2 million times, and as the show continues to grow, your ad would be embedded in our episodes forever. So the return on investments on advertising with us is unmeasurable and invaluable. If you're interested in this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, then text PODCAST to 646-687-4152 or email us at info at insidethevaultshow.com. Allow your business to get the visibility that it deserves. Uh, and, then, and then so what, you know, I, you, know, I see uh, you mastermind a lot, you know, um, and a lot of people don't realize the power of the mastermind. Um, you know, why do you mastermind and talk about the benefits of, of being in, you know, groups of like-minded people? Yeah. Well, one, I, I'm a, I'm an introvert, mm. but I love like getting to know a small group of people deeply. Yeah. That fills me up. Yeah. Also, like, I think part of the ministry part for me is I knew that I would be like a young adult pastor mm. and I still feel like I get to do that when I have like other people around me. Like mm. we still get to like fill each other up. We yeah. still get to like, you know, minister to one another in smaller groups. Yeah. And then I also just like seeing everybody win. Yeah, absolutely. So like, yeah. oh, you win it. Let's yeah, win together. Yeah, yeah, like, sure. oh, I can do. Let's do. Like, I just like seeing everybody win. Yeah. Like that, too, gives me excitement. Yeah. So like um, in the course. So, yes, I've done well, but we've actually paid out over. I think it's now like one point three million dollars to nice. other businesses nice. from our business. Nice. Like that gives me joy knowing that I'm actually like helping other businesses succeed. That's cool. Wow. No, I love that. I love that. And, and you know, I hope y'all are hearing that, you know, when you, uh, you get what you give, right? And so the more uh, you're willing to give, the more that you're willing uh, to help others, the more yes. that blessing is, is, is coming, coming back to you. Uh, and, and so, um, at, you know, we talk about the, 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 the you know, older people, at, you know, what's the, the youngest age someone someone could start, you know, trading? So technically, you're supposed to be 18 to open an account. Right. But I have a lot of parents in the program whose kids are learning. Yeah. So we have some, like, fifth graders killing the game. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Killing the game. Like, yeah. they compete with their parents, and they're making, like, $100 a day. And mm. the parents are like, oh, wait, you're making more than me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, like, you can, you can actually start learning at any age. For me, when I first was introduced, I was junior in high school going in my senior year. Mm. I think it'd be really cool if a lot more high school students and college students start learning how to trade. Because mm. then they can take their like b signing bonus from that first job and actually do something with it. Yeah. 
Or like if they do decide, okay, I'm going to do something different. They know they have options. They can make money. Mm-hmm. I love it. Yeah. I love it. And, and, and you, you spoke about, um, you know, being, uh, living in Puerto Rico. Um, and I know there are some tax benefits to that. Oh, yes. No, I'm just kidding. Well, talk to us about that. <laughs> So I moved to Puerto Rico in May Mm -hmm. and I moved, yes, for taxes. So if you have an online company Mm -hmm. and I hope these things don't change, but if you have an online company right now, it's called the Act 60 rule. Mm -hmm. You and you export your services. So that's like any online coach that has customers somewhere else or there's a couple of different business models that fit. Mm -hmm. You only pay 4% in taxes. Mm -hmm. And then if you're a trader on capital gains, you pay 0%. Mm -hmm. Now you do have to do like the paperwork is... It's tough. The paperwork is kind of long and takes takes a while. Yeah. But if you're a resident, which means you stay at least um, 183 days and like live there, like I I own there now, mm-hmm. you have to live there, but you don't have to be there all the time, just six months. Mm-hmm. Then you can start getting some of those benefits. Wow, wow. So so zero wait zero taxes on your trade. Uh huh. Four percent taxes on on your online company. On your online company. Wow. And so um. How important is that, right, to um, be able to understand taxes and um, having the right business structure, things of that nature? Because um, you pay more in taxes than people even make in a year. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know if you want to share, but like, but like you make you like you pay a lot of taxes, which means you're making a lot. But yeah. but 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 also, which is which is why it's understandable. You know, why would you, you know, why you need to have, you know, the proper structures. But for, for business folks, like talk a little bit about that, like the importance of having, having right structures. structures. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so one, it's important to, as we talked about mastermind, get some people on your team that know how to do tax stuff. Because yeah. you can't be the expert at everything. Yeah. So like that's one, having the right people around you. But then for me, there's a couple things with taxes. One, people think that you get really high taxes as a trader, and that's actually not true. Mm. You get taxed at your regular income bracket. Mm. Because I'm above the highest income bracket, I get taxed at the higher rate, mm-hmm. right? But for me, that means, okay, you do a different thing. So you can trade in an, a C-Corp. Mm-hmm. That would mean that you only get taxed at 20%. Um, there's some, uh, like, I don't want, like, I don't want the IRS coming after me, but, um, a couple things that people can do if they're traders, there's a way that you can actually file for the, to the IRS that you are an active investor Mm. and that you trade for income Mm. that allows you to trade as a business. Mm. So now the same way that your business reports a W4, like you can actually report your income as income. And if you have a loss, you can report the whole loss. Mm. So if you don't, if you're not a full-time trader, then what they'll say is, okay, you only have a limit on how much you can write off. But as a full-time trader, like in 2020, excuse me, in 2020, if somebody had a lot of losses in the beginning of the year, like, yes, some people had some big gains after, but like, there are some people who like really took a hit in 2020. You could have wrote the whole thing off as a business. And now coming into these next years, like you actually are are good to go. Love so it, that's it. that's a couple of secrets to the tax game. No, I love it. Love yeah. It, love it. And so, you know, switching gears a little bit, um, you know, made a lot of money. Uh, what would you say is the most extravagant thing you've done with money so far? I am a venture capitalist now, so I actually like invested in a private jet company. Oh, nice. Uh-huh, and it's black owned, so I'm super excited about that. Um, their hope is to one day, can I say all this? Yeah, I can say this. Okay. <laughs> their hope is to one day get um, private jets to operate on on natural gas, mm. and that's going to take the price down so that the price of flying on a private jet is the same as the price of flying like first class on a plane. Wow. And then everybody can take a private jet. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Love and that's that. that's fun because I'm in I'm an MIT alum. Yes. So like that's another MIT alum. Nice. So that's been kind of fun too. Like, nice, nice. oh, I get to invest back into these projects that are really cool. Nice, nice. And then so on, on that vein, what, what would you say is the most uh, impactful thing you've done with money? A couple of things. Um and was it earlier? No, it was last year. Now our, the years are going together. But yeah, yeah. 
in 2020, there was a frost and it flooded or it froze all the pipes in Dallas. Mm. And what people don't realize is the pipes froze, but then when they defrosted, they flooded, they broke and flooded a lot of homes, yeah. but they also flooded a lot of churches. Mm. So like, if you can imagine people, you know, nobody's coming to church. You just finished renovating your building. You've used all the tithes and offerings to do that. And now all of a sudden it's all flooded and destroyed. So like I gave quite a bit to just help restore churches wow. in Texas. Wow. Um, I also gave a big donation to like a nonprofit that's covering black stories all over the world. Wow. So now those journalists will be able to be funded. And yeah, like church, like a lot of things, like I think my calling is to fund ministries. Mm. So I funded a lot of like ministries. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's been really cool. Nah, I love that. I love that. And then, you know, if, if, if you were to give advice, Right. To to 18 year old Terry. Yeah. What are you telling her? I would tell her, one, you're good enough. Mm. Because in so many other roles that I had, and I don't know if that's just, you know, God prepares you for your story. Yeah. It felt like I would do so well in a job and then year three, it would all fall apart. Mm. And after a while, I started feeling like, well, I'm the problem. This keep happening. It's not them. It's me. Right. Right. <laughs> like, what's right. wrong with me? Yeah. But it also might be that, like, God has such a calling on your life. He needs to move you. And the only way he'll move you is to make your situation bad enough that you're willing to move. Mm. Like I call it the Moses. Like he, it says God hardened Pharaoh's heart. Mm. Otherwise, Pharaoh wouldn't have left. Mm. But no, he needed to make that situation bad enough for them to leave. Wow. Right. Wow. So I, I think for me, it would be you're good enough. Yeah. Like you're you're talented. There is a gift inside of you. Keep pushing. Um, and then I also think 18 year old Terry, I would tell her to start trading earlier, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. when I started trading in 2010, Apple was $99. They were wondering if it, it would go to a hundred wow. and then it went to 700 split. Then it did this other thing. Just start. Wow. They were wondering what, uh, if Amazon, Amazon was at 199. Like, Amazon. Wow. It's over $3,500. Right. Now. right. Amazon was at $199 when I started yeah. and it was like, oh, no online real like retail company will work. Yeah, 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 <laughs> so yeah. I would just say, start, just start, get wow. started. You could do this. Wow. Mm -hmm. Man, that's powerful. That's powerful. And so um, do you ever, and, and this is just, you know, sort of just like um, when I think about trading, how do you know, um, what to trade on a daily basis and what are those stocks that you hold on to, right? Like yeah. what, which, which are the ones that you say, Oh, I got this at a price. I'm not selling this. I'm just going to hold on to it. And then which are the ones that you say, all right, I'm, I'm a trade it, but I know that I want to, I want to get out on it. You know, I think it's a myth that we should always buy and hold mm. just like in real estate. Like you could be like a long-term investor where you buy the house and then let it appreciate. And then there's some people that are flippers and like that's their expertise. They're flippers. They buy the house, fix it up and then sell it like you don't have to be like, you don't have to be one or the other, but you also can specialize. Mm. So for me, I'm actually an active investor all the way. Mm. I don't have any long-term ones that I'm just holding forever. Wow. However, I do have a watch list of 30 companies that are like my go-tos. Like these are companies I believe in. I think that they're going to do really well. I've been trading them a long time, mm. but I trade in and out of them to make income. Mm. So it's kind of so I kind of flip it on its head. Yeah. I, I have some companies that I really like for the long run, but I still actively invest in them. Mm, mm, I love that. And what, what's uh, what, what's the ultimate goal for Terry? Like, is is she is she trading for the rest of her life? Like, when 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 it's when it's all said and done, where where, where is uh, you know Terry E E, e D Omar? I. That that changes almost every day. Mm. You ask me tomorrow, I'll be like, "This is the new thing." <laughs> right, right. <laughs> um. This goal, this year, one of my goals is to make 50 million in a year. Mm. And I didn't quite hit it yet. Yeah. So I think next year it's still going to be 50 million. Yeah. Um, and that's both with trading and my courses. Yeah. Um, and I, and I say that not to, not to brag and hopefully for not, not to be unsafe, but just mm -hmm. for somebody out there to know, like, you can't have bigger goals. Yeah. Um, I haven't yet hit that. So I still want to hit that. Yeah. At some point, 
I know that God is calling me into ministry. Mm -hmm. Like I've been prepared for it. Like I I know that that's what he wants. So I know that this platform is really like he's building up this platform of people like learning how to build wealth. And he's building up like like my students are killing it. Like they're starting to have a ten thousand dollar in a day. We already Mm -hmm. passed the thousand people in the thousand dollars in a day club. So like we're generating millions of dollars a day. Um, So there's this whole group of people learning how to build wealth. And I know that God's going to do something with it. Yeah. I don't know what yet, but I, I just see something's going to happen with that. Yeah. No, love it. Love it. Love it. All right. So we're going to do a quick lightning round. Uh, and in our lightning round, what we do is we take uh, bank terms and we flip them for here inside the vault. Okay. All right. So the first term is deposit slip, right? And so deposit slip is where uh, you have your deposit slip. You fill it out. You, you deposit. You put money inside the bank. But for us, a deposit slip is a mess, a mess up, a mistake, a slip up, right? What would you say or what was your biggest deposit slip so far in your journey? Oh, in in Thailand, I had the biggest loss I had ever lost on a trade Mm. at the time because I was assistant principal. So I had lost twenty six thousand dollars in a day. Wow. Yes. And it was because I traded a stock during earnings. That's Mm. a no, no. Mm. Like that's that's that. That actually is a gamble, Mm. but you don't have to like, I don't like using that word, but I just don't like trading during earnings. I would uh, tell people don't do that. Mm. Um, Also, I had like 8,000 shares, Mm. way too many shares. Quantity size is important. Like make sure that your risk is managed by not trading too many shares at a time. Mm. Um, I had like a whole formula for that. But biggest slip up was trading Pandora. That day I made tw- lost twenty six thousand. Wow. I almost died. Wow. Like that was all my savings at the time, wow, yeah. and my mom had to like get me off the ledge because mm. I was like, I'm gonna quit. Mm. I'm coming home. <laughs> and she was like, Well, how are you gonna get your money back if you don't keep trading? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't expect she was going to be that like a stu- or st- yeah. like usually yeah. I thought she was going to be like I told you so come home right <laughs> now. <laughs> she didn't do it. <laughs> oh, I love it. Love it. Love it. Uh second term is a uh, charge off, right? Charge off, you borrow money from the bank, you don't pay it back. The bank is trying to get the money but eventually they say, "You know what? We're going to charge this off." Um but for us inside the vault, uh what type of people or mindset did you have to charge off? during your journey? Ooh, when I first got started, there was another guy who was helping me. He was like doing the slides for me because I was finishing up seminary Mm. and I didn't know that I would have time to actually like do my first presentation, but he wanted 50% of the profits. Wow. So like we would, you know, get people to sign up and then 50% would go to him. But then on the back end, I would still have to pay expenses out of your face. You're like, no. (laughs) I'm like, man, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So can you, so what, what happened was one time I actually took the expenses off the top and then said, well, let's split the rest. He got so upset over like a thousand dollars. So we parted ways. Can you imagine the, that was such a blessing because now can you imagine having to split like millions of dollars with him? But he was mad over a thousand dollars. That kind of mindset, like very short sighted. Yeah. And, 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 and while we're there, like, what is the key um, to running a successful online business? Right. Because um, to do the type of numbers that you're doing, like mm-hmm. that's that's my wish. Right. Like, you know, as an online, you know, course creator as well. Like what what is what is the, the, the secret? Like if you if you were to kind of like, you know, you know, narrow it down to like the top three or four things yeah. that any course creator would do, what would you say the secret to that, to that is? Part of it is I made a course that I really needed. Mm -hmm. Like, I wish that I had had these skills Mm -hmm. when I first started trading. I think, like, that's the key. Like, I I didn't just make a course for no reason. I made a course because, like, this is what people were asking me for. I was feeling a need. And then I, I actually thought... What is it that I wish I had when I first started? So I think that's one. Your course has to be needed, necessary. Then two, I think like it's important that you have a marketing plan. Mm. Like a lot of people think if I just have a good product, it'll sell itself. No, you're going to have to do a launch and quick, 
quick tip on launches. Mm-hmm. Like, first start out by, this is my favorite thing ever. That's why I tell people about it. Yeah. Because I don't get to teach this in a course. Yeah. But, like, first you got to start out with education. Like, educate the people. But then you need to go into, like, an agitation phase. Mm-hmm. This is where you're really kind of getting their emotions into it. And then you can come in with why your product is the solution. Mm-hmm. So, like, if anybody has tip, needs tips for marketing, mm-hmm. try that pattern. It yeah. works really well. Yeah. But, like, a good marketing. And then you got to have really good customer service. Mm-hmm and like support for your students. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times we get so caught up as entrepreneurs in like going after the next client or the next student, we forget our current Mm -hmm. students. So you need to make sure that they are taken care of, that they are successful, that they are doing well before you move on to that next person. Yeah, Yeah. I love that. All right, last but not least, ATM, right? So ATM uh, is where you go, it's a machine, you go, you put your card in, you say, hey, give me some money, and, and, the, and the ATM machine gives, right? Uh, for us here, ATM is another teachable moment. You gave us so much insight, so many big gold bars. Uh, give us one more insight, anything that you want the people to know. Another teachable moment. Where will that be? I think sometimes when people start with a small amount of money in trading, they think that they have to pick companies that are less expensive. Mm. So they go after the $20, $30, or maybe even the penny stocks because they don't have a lot of money. But I have flipped that on its head. I'd actually go for one company that is maybe a little more expensive, but just tried and true. Mm. And I might get one share of that versus getting a whole bunch of something that's crappy. Mm. So for example, like if you have $3,000, I might get one share of Amazon because it moves a hundred dollars a day yeah. versus getting like a thousand of some three cents something that don't do nothing right, right? right. like you have more success going after that one good thing yeah. than trying to get a whole bunch of crap mm, i love that i love that i love that another powerful episode of inside the vault with ash cash the multi-billionaire terry egioma is in the building with us if Somebody wanted to connect with you. Uh, with, matter of fact, I know you, you, you're going to have something special for our viewers. Um, and so trade and travel, talk to them. I'm so receiving the billionaire part. Yes. I'm so receiving that. But I have a free webinar at tradeandtravel.com. And then I have a free like gift for all of you guys. Well, not free, but a gift for all of you guys at tradeandtravelvault.com. So definitely check those out. All right, cool. And then if uh, you know someone to follow you, uh, you know, what's your social media handle? Actually, they can find me everywhere at Trade and Travel. So you can do it on Instagram, Trade and Travel, YouTube, Trade and Travel. Um, that's the best places right there. All right, All right y'all. <laughs> Listen, if you are not picking up what she's putting down, I don't know if to tell you. This is somebody who started uh, in, a, in a nonprofit space, education, and now multi-millionaire, soon to be multi-billionaire. So make sure y'all tap in with Terry Egioma. I am Ash Cash. We are closing out the vault. Make sure you follow us at all social media platforms at Inside the Vault. Follow me, Ash Cash, at I am Ash Cash. And I'll see y'all next time. The greatest money mindset show on the planet. Same time, same place, in God's will. Peace. Oh yeah, oh yeah, you won't ask cash, you can catch it right here in the ball.